Hello, everybody, and welcome to the New York Comic Con panel for Hulu's Books of Blood. I'm Megan Navarro, the lead critic for Bloody Disgusting, and I'll be your panel moderator. I am thrilled to introduce our huge panel of guests. We have with us today Brandon Braga, the director, Britt Robertson, <laughs> Rafi Garone, hey, 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 Anna Friel, Anna Friel, Frida Foshed. And last but not least, Yule Vasquez. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to start with Brandon Braga. How do you go about developing an anthology based on Clive Barker's acclaimed and influential horror novel series? Well, first of all, let me say I wish we were all in New York with Yule. Me too. This is only slightly more awkward than the actual live panels. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're missing the audience. Um, which is always so much a big part of it. And uh, mm -hmm. to the Comic-Con people, this is like the first time I haven't been to Comic-Con in so long. I, I really do miss the communal experience. Um, but it's great to see everybody. I haven't seen all of you. I feel like breaking down in tears. I haven't seen you guys in so long and certainly not all at once. And so that's such a great thing. Um, the... The process of adapting Clive's work began with sitting down with Clive himself. And it was an interesting experience for me as a longtime fan of his work and a longtime fan of anthologies. And deciding which stories to do, um, he was more interested in talking about new stories than the stories in the books. And I was a little more interested in the books because I was such a fan. And I realized, well, for, from his perspective, you know, he wrote those stories a long time ago. He had books of blood stories that he hadn't written yet. So we decided to do kind of a mix uh, where we took uh, the book of blood, which is the very first story in the very first volume, which is being uh, re-released any day now, republished that book, um, that volume as a tie-in with this movie. And uh, we took that as the grounding story, and that was the Mary Simon story or the Rafi Anna story. And then we had two other stories uh, that were kind of in, in part um, just original ideas that we just came up with. And that would be the Jenna or Brit story and the Bennett Yule story. And the Yule story kind of became the framing device. And um, we just kind of went with the others. And it was a fun process. He executive produced, correct? How kind of hands-on was he throughout the entire process? Or was this completely your own? Well, Clive was not that involved. He was more involved in the conception of the movie and the stories. Um, I brought on a writer I collaborate with a lot named Adam Simon, and we wrote the screenplay. And Clive is kind of holed up in his Hollywood uh, Hills home writing his new novel. So he wasn't that involved in production over in Canada. Clyde Barker's stuff has got a reputation for very visceral, kind of gory horror, but there's also a lot of human elements to it. And the film has, like, how do you find the balance between the gore and the emotion? Well, that's the thing about Clive's The Books of Blood, which is six volumes of stories that he came out with all at once. It would have been like the Beatles coming out with all their albums the same day. It's this amazing collection of, of stories that he sat down and wrote. And they're all very different. And only a handful of them are, are only one of the stories is Hellraiser, or this, the story that became Hellraiser with that punk rock, gore, needles in face sensibility. His stories are very literary and psychological for the most part. They're horrifying, but they're, they're I think this film represents his work really beautifully, I think. And can you touch on the gory aspects of it? What I love about his stories is that they're transgressive in, in the sense that they don't have vampires or werewolves or all of the traditional horror trappings. You won't find any of that stuff in his stories. His stories are always original. And if there's a monster, it's something you've never thought of before. I wanted to start with a clip that involves Anna Friel and Rafi Gabron as uh, Mary and Simon. So if we can cue up that clip, please. Whatever happened that day it doesn't prove anything. Miles sent me to you for a reason, Mary. 
Because if you, with all your tools of science, with all your certainty, if you fail to prove me wrong, it will change the world. And at that point, you will see how close your son really is to you. by there's some emotional intensity involved in Books of Blood. It's not just a creep fest. Um, what can you tell us about Mary and Simon? The emotional side of it is what I liked. I, I think talking to Brandon at the very beginning of getting involved, um, I, I wanted to understand tonally what he was doing with it and where it fitted um, in the genre. I guess the tone is the most important thing that we, we, we set when telling a story. And I said that I'd loved... Um, the Ring and the Twilight Zone and things that had an emotional core and were led emotionally truthfully because then I think it, it ends up being more scary and I, I'm I'm like you Megan I, I love got some gore and lots and lots of blood but sometimes less can be more and um, and therefore more more frightening and I hadn't got, uh, gotten to see any of the other stories so Britt and Frida um, I loved your story mm-hmm. I really relate to you Britt with the whole with the noise i think I, I i have a bit of that myself mm-hmm. my daughter calls it chumming mm. when someone eats too loudly i was like i get it i get it i get it it really pissed me off too <laughs> brandon has the, that a little bit of, as well right oh yeah more than a little can you tease anna like a little bit about um, mary for viewers who haven't watched yet well she's really lucky because she gets to um kiss raffi and <laughs> she's she's a she's a she's uh, a wonderful mother and she's a skeptic and she likes to expose those skeptics and I think she represents anybody that has found themselves vulnerable and people have used that to their advantage and harmed instead of helping um, and I think that's quite a strong message in today's age and what we're all going through everybody no one needs one of those in their lives right now and he preys upon the fact that she's vulnerable and she's lost her son without giving too much away and she doesn't want answers she's put it to bed and uh Rafi makes a question and what can you tell us about Simon Rafi well she just did I mean I'm the reverse I'm an absolute con artist hopefully a convincing one I think in this case a convincing one I spoke to Brandon about this and what's interesting about Simon is it all comes from a place of just complete brokenness as a character. And one of the reasons I did this, because, you know, I, I don't know what to make of horror films, um, was this story between Mary and Simon and, and the basis of it. And most con artists, most manipulators are people who have been manipulated. And so I'd like to think that it came from that place. Um, and that in, you know, as, as manipulative and evil as, as, as Simon can be, um, he's probably just a damaged young boy um, and, as a result, quite good at uh, roping people in. You'll notice, Megan, when, when you watch it, that we both, uh, Rafi and I, have British a- a- accents because we're British, <laughs> strangely enough. <laughs> uh, um, but we, and we kind of have a little bit of a, 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 a discussion of, well, who, who's going to take the American accent? <laughs> who's going to take the English? You had to ask Brandon that early on. That was me. I, I managed to pull it. And I remember Anna just going, you fucker. Uh, yes. You fucker. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, don't, yeah. don't you really think Professor Mary should be like really British? So it no. wasn't even decided necessarily. No, I got to Brandon no, first. Rafi, Rafi I literally got it. to Brandon first. I went to his, his office and I go, I'm doing English. I'm doing English. And like, she was pissed. Oh, I yeah. loved it. <laughs> Brandon, yeah, Brandon was like, well, you know, if we have both of us, both of them being British. Mine, and I was like... Okay, I get it. I get it. I've got the accent. You carried away in, Brandon, on this. No, Rafi made the first call. Okay. Uh, it was really, you know, it was something that I, you know, it's just one of those things. It, I, I imagined Mary as an American character, so that worked for me. And uh, Rafi, I thought the British accent added a little exotic aspect of mystery to his character and I thought it was fine. He hired me for Simon and I got him with my first con, basically. I got the director. <laughs> I conned the shit out of Brandon. <laughs> so you weren't acting is what you're saying. 
No, normally I'm not, which is scary. You had mentioned that you don't know what to make of the horror, Rafi. So basically you resonated with the characters first and foremost. And, and did you get a better sense of horror after working on this movie? Um, I did, but I don't see it as a horror film personally. Um, what drew me to it was a drama with supernatural aspects and Brandon's writing. And I spoke to Anna about this because we both, you know, we're, I remember Anna, maybe I'm not, I shouldn't speak for you, but, you know, these kinds of movies in these genres are, are not something that I've really done before or, or, or was interested in. And so it was, it was, it speaks to Brandon and his writing and, and that tone Anna talked about, which, um, which kind of drew me to it, you know? And so I still, in watching it, just think of it as a drama, I, literally. And it's got, it's got a cool, Brennan, well, I think that the end result is, I haven't seen it uh, but once, is it, it's, it's retro genre. It, I th- it's, it's, it, feels really, it feels so retro. It's, it is very kind of Twilight zone in the way it's into, into trines with all the, all the different stories. And I think it's just got just the right amount of, of scary. There's a few times when we're <gasps> <laughs> it's like truth. What What's the funniest? What's the funniest comedy I've ever seen? The Sopranos. Why? Because it's great and it's true. You know, it's just truth. And so it's the same concept. As if you bring that truth and that drama into something like this, then every other moment and parts of that supernatural play so much stronger because we're in the story and we buy it in a way that, you know, some fool coming across with a machete means nothing to me, you know, and that's what Brandon did. I want to introduce our next pair of characters, uh, Jenna and Ellie, which is Britt Robertson and Freda. If we could cue up that clip, please. So sorry, dear. I didn't mean to startle you. Are you all right, dear? Yeah. Yeah, I just think I'm really tired. And that one is creepy. So we've got the first clip with the emotional element, and now we've got some creepy stuff. Um, Britt, what can you tell us about Jenna? What I loved about the character of Jenna is that she's like truly sort of suffering inside herself and is finding any opportunity to escape her life you know so at every uh at every turn she's sort of faced with something that feels like a threat to her she suffers from misophonia which is the hatred of sound and so whether that be in her surroundings or her family or her school life she's constantly needing to uh run away from herself you know she's just actually can't sort of exist within herself and i thought that was like a really cool challenge uh as an actor to sort of navigate that and figure out what that was and and when reading it on the paper I was like I don't even know I don't even know how how I'm going to do this uh or what this is or what this will look like but I had a lot of faith in in Brandon and I I think it's such a cool story we found something very different but in a great way and I sort of surprised myself at creating this character as we went you did a really good job Britt you were so good and when the needles going in your eye that's so terrifying I loved, I loved your story. What was that comment I made about our clip, Anna? Great acting. I looked at, uh, I looked at their clip and I went, better acting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frida, Jenna is on edge, but in this clip, Ellie is very warm. What can you tell us about Ellie? Well, you know, the thing with Ellie, I think, is she is very warm. I mean, that, that is her character. And what has happened to her, which allows her to understand what's going on with Jenna, is... Ellie has experienced PTSD um, and she has experienced it in the way that so many of our medical personnel are currently experiencing it in the hospitals. And she has seen people go through things. She has understood uh, the limits of her ability to take away their pain, to, to help them. And so now she's determined because that avenue is shut off to her and because she herself is um, traumatized, you know, with, with her own experiences, she is determined to give a place for people like Jenna, who need open arms, who need some place to go. And that's, that's what that to me is about. I mean, giving her 
salt. It's very like warm human like emotions and connecting and then you have a creepy bug in the middle of all of this oh well you know it's my husband i mean my husband is not very he doesn't keep the house tidy and uh it, these bugs come in don't you find that in your own home not coming through the walls <laughs> well you have a nice home <laughs> i mean seriously i have ants you have ants yes ants who have come up through my staircase uh tracking a, just a little caravan of them going like this i have ants that come through my front doors maybe ellie just attracts insects i don't know so there's something very sinister possibly happening in this home well that's your interpretation i suppose i can't say yes or no <laughs> Last but not least, let's get to know Bennett. Um, we have a clip with Yule. If we could cue that up, please. Believe it or not, I don't want to have to kill anybody else today. So I'm asking you one last time, where's the book? What book? The Book of Blood. Oh, that book. Well, you're looking at it. All right. <laughs> That's a great tease. <laughs> you, don't, you, you don't get to see the Book of Blood. Well, they cut it off at just the right moment. <laughs> we went from emotional to creepy to intense. Bennett looks intense. What can you tell us about Bennett? Bennett is a hired assassin, but, uh, but I think has been looking to leave the business. Bennett's looking for... Um, a mellower life. He's been looking for a mellower life, uh, which is kind of what gets him in trouble here uh, because he, he he gets a tip on something that can maybe lead to that life. I think he's a, he's a man who's just sort of done done with this, um, and uh, which is what was attractive to me about uh, the part. The guy who is conflicted as to what he wants to do and he wants to go somewhere else. Any human who's been looking at a point in their lives and, you know, want want to make a serious sort of sort of change except that this guy's a he's a fucking hitman he's kind of like a terminator in a way he's got some like laser focus he locks on and nothing is shaking or distracting him from from his goals but ultimately i think that's the only thing that gets that can get me the yule the actor from point a to to, to z at the end of the you know that focus is just a it's a tool to work and that really served bennett because bennett he starts the journey, he's like, hey, let's go find this thing, and then everything goes sideways on him. Yule's character is very important because he, his story is the framing device that kind of in some ways unifies the stories. Um, and I like what Rafi said earlier about horror movies. Horror movies, the best ones, don't know they're horror movies, and the characters don't know they're in a horror movie. The horror genre is the only genre that can be any genre. So... His is a crime story, and his character wanders into a horror movie by accident, which I really like. And Yule also had the first, the roughest first day of work because he came in and he had to do a scene where he had imaginary rats crawling all over him, and and, <laughs> and he's supposed to be screaming and stabbing himself, and this was his first scene, and it was just like this is not going to work. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, <laughs> I remember it wasn't, you weren't having the best time. Oh, no. <laughs> it hurt, but it took, I, I felt bad that that was the first time we met on the set and you were having to do this ridiculous dancing around. But it turned out okay, I think. It's funny because I saw it and, uh, and yeah, you're right. It did. It did. But I, but I, but I and that's uh, honestly a credit, a credit to you because I, I do remember, I do remember saying to you, listen, I've been doing this a long time and I, and I love directors. I love directors, but I know, and I know you put footage, you put footage in people's hands and they can fuck you. You know what yeah, I mean? Yes. Yes. I, I remember saying to Brandon, I looked at him and I said, Hey man, don't let me look like a fucking asshole here. Good for you. He looked at me, he goes, trust me, I won't. And I went, dude, I will find you. You understand, like, I, you know, <laughs> this is like, I will find you and I'll be like, you you promised me, but you know what? True to his word, he he didn't, you know what I mean? And that, I honestly, that was one of the hardest first days I've ever had and I've been doing this 25 years. Oh. That was one of the hard, that was, that was just, and it was 
and it was also late in the day that they had already had a giant day and I came in at night and everybody was tired and they're like this let's throw blood and I was like oh god you mean it was one of those but you know what thank you thank you Brandon you know because you really you know you you hooked a brother up you know what I mean yeah thank you you gave it your all I guess it got a little bit easier from there that that was the the you were at the peak and the rest was a downhill it did it got it got you know we had some really great days I mean it did honestly it got easier from that there's an element to this that is literally a leap of faith I remember reading the script and seeing that scene and, it, and you know Brandon Brandon probably doesn't know this you know and I called my agent I went oh this scene man what is what and then like they're like that's the movie I'm like okay cool I mean this could be cool but you know I'm worried about a lot of things you know because you're worried about you, you just worry but you know but I but I dove in you know I dove in and uh and and I remember speaking to speaking to Brandon on, on the phone, and I'm and I and I remember liking him, and, and I was like, okay, man, let's go and let's take a leap of faith. Yeah, it is. It is a scare. It is kind of scary for me too. I mean, it's all we're all kind of diving into this new thing together, and I do really admire these actors because they had to do each story requires each of them to do something kind of disturbing or wacky or counterintuitive and. Um, I really appreciate you guys. Likewise. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, just give it a rest. You know, we're always complaining. <laughs> it's like no shit. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you're paying me, just show yeah. up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Books of Blood is out on Hulu now, so definitely go watch it if you haven't already or watch it again because as these clips have shown and our lovely guests uh, have, have discussed, this it's an anthology that is grounded in human emotion, that, that's full of horror, both of the supernatural kind and of the human kind. There's literally something for everybody, scares, heart, even some like tears. Um, so yeah, please watch it now. Thank you, New York Comic Con, for having us, and thank you guys for being a part of this. Thanks, New York yeah. Comic Con. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.